In the first part of this video lecture, we discussed how to split a function, decompose a function as the difference of its positive and negative parts. Then using this decomposition, we defined what the integral of a function is by resorting to the previous case of non-negative functions that has already been defined in the previous video lecture. And now we move on to discuss properties of this integral defined for most extended Borel functions, except of course those where the computation will give us plus infinity minus infinity, which we don't like as usual. So this is a theorem stating the main and most important properties and most fundamental properties of the Lebesgue integral. First, the in if a constant is multiplying function f, we can take that constant out of the integral as long as both integrals are defined. The one that we have here after taking out the constant and the one that we have here with the constant inside. Okay? Well, typically if alpha, if alpha is a finite number and it's not zero, it, these are, it, it's equivalent. The first integral will be defined if and only if the second integral is defined. However, when alpha is zero or infinity, we may have corner cases that I'll leave for you to think about. The second property is if function, a function f has an integral, a function g has an integral, and both are not infinite with opposite signs, then we can add these two numbers, these two extended numbers. This will give us an extended number again except for the case where the first one gives plus infinity and the second one gives minus infinity or vice versa. So except for these two cases, we can add these two numbers and these two numbers, the, the addition of these numbers will coincide with, we, with what is the integral of f plus g. However, if we are in one of these two cases, then uh, this second property here is not saying anything about the integral of f plus g. The second uh, last property that we have, fundamental property of uh, the Lebesgue integral that we have defined now for extended Borel functions, is if two functions are comparable, f larger than g, this is a notation to say f of omega is larger than g of omega for every omega, this, this is what this short notation f larger than g means. And if the integral of g is finite, is not minus infinity, if this integral is not minus infinity, then the integral of f is defined. It is not minus infinity either, and it's larger than the integral, at least as large as the integral of g. And on the other hand, if the integral of f is finite, it is not plus infinity, then the integral of g is not plus infinity either, and it's bounded from above by the integral of f. Now here's an exercise for you. First exercise is to show that if f is a non-negative extended Borel function, then the definition we just gave which is this one here, which is not the previous definition. The previous definition was uh, axiomatic. And now we're making a definition. We're taking a function, splitting the function into positive and negative parts, and defining this integral. So what the exercise is asking is to show that this new definition is consistent with the previous definition in case the function f happens to be non-negative. Another interesting exercise to test and practice our understanding of this uh, definition of integral is assume the integral of a function, an extended Borel function f, is defined. And assuming it is defined, that means this integral here can be a number plus infinity, minus infinity, or finite. But the positive and negative parts of f when integrated alone do not both give infinity again. So 
So in this case, when it is defined, show that the absolute value of this integral is bounded from above, and here's a serious typo, is bounded from above by the integral of the absolute value of x. This is an extremely useful inequality that we'll be using many, many times in the future, and it is a good exercise for you to practice your understanding of the previous concepts to uh, prove this just using the definitions, we, the properties we have stated so far, and the de very definition of the Lebesgue integral for extended Borel functions. Another very interesting exercise is if you know a function g is integrable, and well, the function g it is non-negative because we assume it is bounded from below by the absolute value of another function, so and that is all, of course always non-negative, so g is non-negative and integrable, and we have a function whose absolute value is bounded from above by g, then f is integrable. This is a very nice exercise to practice our ability in manipulating this uh, splitting into positive and negative parts and combining them together, etc. Another very um, nice exercise is assuming that the integral of a function f is well defined, show that we, when we multiply f by a function that takes values less than 1 and are non-negative, and in particular we are only asking here when the function is taking values 0 and 1, uh, show that this one is defined as well. And to conclude this video lecture, another exercise, which is uh, using, of course, the previous exercise, and the other one and the distribution and pro basic properties of the integral, take a function f, which is an extended Borel function, and a, a Borel set, and assuming that f is integrable, show that f times the indicator of a function is integrable.